Welcome everybody to TechSoup Connect. I'm so glad you're here with us this evening. I'm excited about what we're gonna talk about. Um, and I'm excited about my guests too, but a little bit about TechSoup. TechSoup is a global organization and their whole goal is to bring nonprofits together and allow them to come to spaces like this. And they do this through TechSoup Connect. So we have a network of volunteers that organize and mobilize people through meetups and virtual trainings like this. And we always need help. So if you're interested in either hosting an event or being a speaker or being someone who will take notes, if you're interested in being a volunteer, just let us know. We have these events once a month. Or if you know someone else who you think would be a great speaker to bring information to nonprofits to share. So just a little bit about TechSoup. I don't know if you know, um, but they are a global organization. They're in 120, they're over 123 different groups and they're in 43 different countries. So it, when I say global, they truly are global. And then whether you know it or not, a lot of people come to TechSoup for the awesome hardware or software, but there's so much more that TechSoup has to offer. There are lots of free um, courses, seminars, webinars, and then we also have our blogs. But if you need any kind of technology, make sure you come to TechSoup first because a lot of people I hear from them say, oh, I just found out about TechSoup. Oh, I didn't know TechSoup had that. But from computers to um, headsets to if you're, if you're in a rural area and you need a, a device to help you get Wi-Fi, TechSoup has it all. So make sure that you stop at TechSoup.org to get all your software and hardware needs. So I'm excited about my guest today. I get to introduce Joel Ramjong. And Joel is a man who's full of, every time I talk to him, I'm learning more and more about what he does and who he helps. Um, just a little bit of backstory. I met Joel at an event and I learned about his nonprofit. I volunteered for his nonprofit and I thought, wow, he is doing some amazing thing. And then I got to know him on another level because I found out how much he helps other nonprofits. He's a, a nonprofit consultant. He sets up 501c3s, he consults with them. And then not only that, he's, I'm gonna say he's an expert. He may not say he's an expert. He's an expert in Salesforce, which is something that you everybody can use. I need to learn, I know a little bit about it, but Joel's gonna just kind of drop some seeds with us tonight with Salesforce, GrantStation. And he's gonna talk about his organization and how they were able to maintain their, you know, their growth during down times and what you can do if it's a slow time in your organization. So I'm going to turn it over to Joel. Joel, welcome and thank you for being here tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Aretha. I am really grateful uh, for you and, and, and your guidance and just, um, just this, this opportunity to have this platform to help uh, you guys, in any way I can, I think one of the, the biggest things that I've come to learn in all my years in, in nonprofit, in the nonprofit world is just how much we need each other. Um, I feel like the, no matter how well you focus on one area or how well, how many years you've been in the non, nonprofit space, there's always something to learn. And I, I love that about this community how we can just come together, help each other, build um, off of each other's experience. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing sometimes in this space how you feel like you're, you're going, 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 and then something happens and you have to, you feel like you're starting over. And it's, it's really the, the power of community that helps us to navigate that space. And I think for all of us, um, in this in this room today, I, you know, we've all endured COVID. We've all had to go through last year. I think for many of us, we're still in it, still trying to navigate this space. And we've picked up tools along the way, and we've learned some good things. And you know, I I love how Aretha has has the the gift of just bringing people together. Um, it's just a natural talent that she has. And we're able to come together, see the problem, and attack it uh, in force. And so tonight, I wanted to just share a little bit about, you know, my my a little bit about who I am, you know, my journey in the nonprofit space, 
as well as you know the, the 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 difficulties we had last year and how we were able to navigate it. Um, and so I I began in the nonprofit world back in two thousand four. Uh, I've done a few different things, um, you know, throughout my college years and, and high school years. And but two thousand four was when I started my first organization. It wasn't even registered. It was just I just started this thing because I. You know, I was working for um, Norwegian Cruise Line as a web developer, and I kept hearing of these nonprofits that would get these websites, and they would put a ton of money into getting the website, not realizing that they had to continue to pay to upkeep the site. And so after a year of pumping money, the site just went dormant. They weren't able to upkeep it. They weren't able to, to continue with the cost of it. And that and it floundered. And so I just started an organization to help them to come alongside them. I built the, the website for them and I built it in a way that they can update it. And I taught their secretaries or just different volunteers from their organizations. And if they ever needed me, they can just message me. I'll pop over, help them. And then they're off and running. And so that was my my beginning in this space. And since then, I've helped uh, an organization that um, went, they, they had about 150 staff in Orlando and they got 198 acre property and the entire property was just dilapidated buildings and they needed to migrate their office from you know a beautiful technology center over to this property and they tapped me to do it. And so it was a fun journey in learning how to, create this, um, you know, this IT infrastructure where there was none. I mean, bringing in firewall and the whole nine yards. And so I've went, I've went through the whole nonprofit technology boot camp during those few years and learned a lot from it. And so tonight, hopefully I could help, um, help you guys in, in, you know, answering questions and helping you navigate this, this new space or some of the, the questions that you have. Uh, a little bit, you know, of, of just shout out to TechSoup. Uh, TechSoup is a phenomenal organization. Uh, one of the things that I really love about TechSoup is they, they don't require you to come in with X amount of years of nonprofit experience or dollars in your bank in order to get certain, you know, level of technologies. It's basically come one, come all, you have a mission, you have a purpose, we're here to help. And I love that. When I started, when I left that other organization in 2015 and started Agape Source, we started with TechSoup right from the beginning. And we, you know, I learned how to scale up. And that is one of the things that is very important uh, in, in the technology space is learning how to scale and how how to see what your current needs are and, and kind of roadmap that, that plan. You know, we do have some really great, you know, softwares available for us, but some of the, you know, we're not using software. It's important to walk. Uh, however, we're going to talk tonight about Salesforce and Salesforce is a beautiful uh, CRM. It's, it's an amazing platform. It is the behemoth in the room. However, it is scalable. You can step into Salesforce right at the beginning with 10 free user licenses and literally be able to start from the ground up. One, You could put one member in there and use it. There's no requirement for how many users you need to have, or you could populated with 20,000 uh, users or more, uh, not users, but, um, you know, constituents uh, in the platform. And so it really is a, a beautiful uh, tool that we can use. Salesforce also has the ability to add in different apps. And so they have an app exchange where you can, if you wanted to have volunteer management in the CRM, they have a volunteer management um, that they develop that's for free, that you can literally plug right in. Uh, events management as well, you could plug that in. 
um, as well as a full nonprofit starter package that allows you to manage your fundraising, your, your donors, uh, the financials. You can even um, you know, set up your uh, merchant services right within Salesforce and have a one-stop shop for everything. And so we use Salesforce for the first few years um, with our organization. And then I scaled up. And I know that sounds funny. How do you scale up out of Salesforce? Because it is a beast. But I needed something that allowed us, you know, to have both uh, the ability, the, the power of Salesforce, and we set, you know, as well as the power of fundraising. And so Salesforce was limited in what we could afford. Now there are some powerful um, platforms you could tie into Salesforce, but you have to have the dollars in order to afford that. And so with TechSoup, there's another wonderful platform called Donor Perfect that we were able to go ahead and use for our fundraising and all of our donor management while at the same token using Salesforce to manage our members and to manage those that we care for and those that we are looking after. So I'll show you a little bit about that today um, in, in what we use and how we use it. And then I wanna open it up to have a time of just questions and answers. You know, um, we have the chat space and so I have the chat space open. And so if there's any time, you know, if you have any questions or whatnot, you know, feel free to just pop it in there. And uh, maybe Aretha, if I don't see it, if I'm sharing the screen, um, if there's a, a good time, you could always pause and I could just jump in and, and address the question, um, you know, right out the bat. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. While you're sharing your screen, some people don't know what the acronym CRM means. Okay. It is Customer Relations Management. And for a nonprofit, that is the... You know, everyone will say the, the fundraising is the backbone, but it isn't. The constituents, our customers, that is the backbone of a nonprofit. We don't exist unless we have someone that, that we are looking after. And it's through that our funders are able to come and tie in and they might have the same passion. They might, you know, we look after international interns that come to America with this dream of, you know, going back, of, of getting a great job and then being able to support their families back home. And they come and they, and it's hard, it's a hard space. And so we come around them as a home away from home. And we have volunteers who love that. That's their heart, that's their passion. We can't keep them away. They're like, hey, any more inserts coming? How can we help? How can we look after them? And so because we focus heavily on our, our constituents, our volunteers who have, a, who have a, a heartbeat for them, they jump in and they fund us a lot of times without us even asking. Um, and so, but, so having a powerful CRM or a well-managed CRM allows you to better manage uh, and grow uh, your organization. It's, it's really difficult uh, if you're using spreadsheets uh, and you have people that need information uh, right away. I am able to, if I'm meeting with uh, one, of our, um, one of our constituents, if I'm meeting with someone that we're looking after, if they are already in the database, when I open my phone, I'll see their picture, I'll see a brief history of the different interactions with our staff, even before I get into the restaurant. And I'll walk in and I'll spot them across the room, having never met them before. But because I had their picture and I had a little bit of history, I walk right up to them, look them in the eye, and, and just engage them immediately. And what that does is, is you, you give them dignity. And, and, and I think that's why we work in a nonprofit space is because we care about the, you know, our, 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 our passion and, and the reason why we do this. So let me pull up my... Here. All right. 
And so uh, Salesforce for nonprofits, um, Salesforce has what is known as the nonprofit starter package. And so Salesforce is really built um, for the sales world. It's not built for the nonprofit space. And so the, the whole goal is, you know, if you're a salesperson and you're going to go meet a customer, you have all the data in front of you, or you're able to, you know, to completely convert the entire space in order to win more customers and look after, um, you know, to focus on the bottom line. And so what Salesforce did is they actually created uh, uh, an app that is installed over Salesforce and, um, and that is the nonprofit starter packet. And so it allows you to, to, to then go from having uh, members or, um, you know, contacts that you're trying to account to having uh, households. Because when in the nonprofit space, we deal with households, we deal with uh, mom and dad, you know, if I if mom gives, that comes from that family unit. And, and so with Salesforce current um, infrastructure, it, each individual has is, is viewed as its own account. And that's a problem for us as nonprofits, especially when we're doing our end of year tax reports. You want to send that family one report and then they're able to then go ahead and, um, and file their taxes. And so by installing this nonprofit starter package, it unlocks that, um, that opportunity to classify everyone in households rather than in um, the generic accounts. Uh, I highlighted uh, something here called Trailhead. You could see that pop out. And Trailhead is Salesforce's free uh, training environment, and it is robust. I'll go ahead and give you a quick demo of that later on um, of the Trailhead side of Salesforce. But you can literally learn from the ground up, including how to use its nonprofit starter package. And so if you have staff being like, how are we going to even dive into Salesforce? Uh, you can get them started with a Trailhead account. Uh, you can, there's an app that allows you to connect Trailhead within Salesforce. And so you can see each other's badges, what you've earned, uh, the different, um, you know, you can look in, and see the different metrics. You can give people awards for, or rewards um, for completing certain exercises because the more you learn, the better you are um, in, in, your, in your job. Uh, you're also able to, um, to use Salesforce for volunteer management, as well as, like I said, the event manage management, all of your online donations and processing uh, and mailings. Uh, does anyone have any questions on Salesforce before I move on? No, this is good. Okay. All right. So... While we're on the topic of CRM, I shared how I use Salesforce uh, primary in the beginning to have um, you know the complete uh, package for our organization. But we realized along the way that some of our some of our staff really were struggling with having our donors as well as our constituents on 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 the same platform, and so I went ahead and through donor per through. Uh, TechSoup uh, tried out Donor Perfect, and we fell in love with Donor Perfect. Uh, it is a phenomenal system. Now, Donor Perfect, uh, our platform costs roughly three hundred a month. Um, is what is the package we currently use, uh, and we have a couple thousand um, donors in in the system. Uh, and so, depending on the size of your organization, will depend on the on the cost of it but for, with donor perfect we were able to bring all our donors in be able to handle all of our online donor donations pro processing gateway um, as well as uh, it coming with constant contacts as as part of the package uh, we have full event management and that is it's very robust uh, you're able to allocate tables you can you know having you can have a full um, vision dinner, for example, 
utilizing the event management system within it. So normally in, in the past with Salesforce, when we whenever we had events using the current uh, event uh, plugin that we used, we couldn't really do the whole tables and all of that other stuff. We actually had to use a different software and that cost money. Uh, and so this actually saved us quite a bit by having it built in. Uh, the other area that cost uh, for us was the online forms. We were uh, paying another company quite a lot of money just to have online forms and to be able to get data from our constituents. And the online forms is built into DonorPerfect and it's very robust. Uh, you're able to, to gather tons of data, uh, have that data even uh, emailed or, or uh, pushed into Google Sheets uh, as well as uh, saved within DonorPerfect. Uh, we also manage our volunteers as well within DonorPerfect. So we do have two uh, ways that we manage uh, volunteers. The, the DonorPerfect uh, volunteer management are really for those that have already gone through the basic, um, those first steps of volunteering, and then they've stepped into now a new level of engagement through donation. And because of that, because, you know, with, with anything, you know, you want to care for your uh, volunteers and you want to look after them. But a lot of times we'll get volunteers that will come in and just volunteer one time and they really populate the database and you could sh send them messages and they'll not respond. And so, but volunteers that give are usually volunteers that have already taken that next step and want further engagement. And so we've, by having those volunteers within DonorPerfect, it allows us to engage them in a different way because they've already taken that next step. Uh, it has the QuickBooks integration. Another huge one for right now with COVID is the Ready, Set, Auction. I know for many of us, we've had to cancel our uh, vision dinners and our galas uh, last year and have had to go into different ways to fundraise. And so Ready, Set, Auction is a unique space where you're able to create an online auction and have a fun way of doing it online as in order to uh, raise money and engage your donors. And then the donor search part um, allows you to actually uh, rate your donors based on their wealth uh, or their giving ability. Uh, let's say, you know, it will look at a donor's history that is posted online and, and then uh, usually through I 990 reporting uh, and, um, and use that data in order to help you better, um, you know, research when you're about to approach this new donor on what you're asking them to step into It allow you to actually um, have the right ask in that it's a feature that we don't really use often, but it is, it is part of the system. And I'll give you a quick uh, look into DonorPerfect uh, a little bit later. Uh, Grant Station, now this, this is an, a, an area that is um, phenomenal. You know, TechSoup, Offering Grand Station for a, a discounted price is, is really a, a huge bonus, especially for us as we're all trying to navigate how do we create new streams of funding, all of the new challenges that we have uh, in, in this space. You know, last year we were fortunate. It, it, with COVID, it was our biggest year, um, not just in fundraising, but our biggest year in, in how much we're, we're caring for, you know, people that are, that, that needed our help. And we were completely shocked. We had, we thought it was going to be rough, uh, financially for us, but we, because we had boots on the ground and we were caring for people and our volunteers and supporters cared about us they started giving even more generously and they started telling others about us. So without us even having our big gala, which raised a, you know, a good chunk for the following year, um, we were able to surpass uh, the giving from, from the previous years and, and end the year um, in, in the black. And so we were really grateful for that. We're looking at Grant Station, you know, 
uh, to continue to push ahead with, um, with, with our organization. And I know for many of you, this is a huge area that, that you are hoping, I, I don't know if you, you're already, um, you know, you've already gotten some grants or you're hoping to step into this space. But in this room, we have uh, Sandra and we have Aretha. You know, these two women are phenomenal in, in the grant writing space. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things, you know, where I, I really encourage you if you're, if you're interested in uh, just even, even a little bit in getting a grant for your organization, uh, don't leave tonight without reaching out uh, to one of us. And uh, finally, the, the last one is going to be Google for nonprofits. Now, TechSoup has a ton of software and a ton of technology that you can use. But Google is a, um, is, is, is a huge uh, benefit. Even if, you've, uh, if you're using Microsoft um, Office um, and, and not using Google, I, I highly recommend um, getting the Google for nonprofits. Uh, Google for nonprofits uh, have a few different things that, um, that, that Microsoft does not use. We use Microsoft uh, here as well. And, and, and so we use that extensively, but where Google stands out is um, being able to use Google Sheets for integrations. We have a lot of different systems and a lot of times we wanna get data from one system into the next or we want to get data going into both systems at the same time. Uh, in, and so with Google Sheets, we're able to do that. An online form will populate, get the data from the form. It'll go into Google Sheets. We use Zapier. Zapier will then push that data from that sheet into the different platforms. And so our, our database is, is always current and always updated with, with less manpower and wondering, how do I get this data into this space? And so there's tons of great uh, tricks and, and things that you can do to minimize the workload in the office by just using something as simple as a Google Sheet. Uh, then you have the YouTube for nonprofit program, which will allow you to create videos and, um, and to start pushing some of your content or to share. Uh, for example, you might've had a great uh, event and you wanna showcase your volunteers and you wanna showcase the event. You can have your YouTube, um, your, you know, your whole YouTube uh, section on, um, uh, what is it called? Sorry, my brain is blanking out but you'll be able to put your YouTube, your videos on YouTube uh, without having to worry about how much space you have or you know, any of those issues. And, um, and the platform is quite robust. You have YouTube Create, uh, which is a part of it. You'll be able to add a lot of different uh, elements to your videos uh, to showcase uh, what your nonprofit does. And then link those videos onto your website or Facebook page or social media. And so a lot of times your volunteers are, will, are quicker to share a video if they're in it. And we've noticed that we put out videos and there's just no shares. We put a video with our volunteers in it and it's just getting shared everywhere because they want their family members and friends to see what they're doing. And then they begin to talk about your organization. And then the other part is the Google ad grants. And this is huge. This allows you to have some free ad grants, uh, some ad dollars uh, for, the, for, your, for the Google search engine. And you're able to then have a Google ad uh, that is paid for by Google that is then, um, you know, if someone searches, I want to help such and such, your organization will come up if you have the right keywords. And so a few different benefits uh, from Google versus Microsoft. Microsoft has its own strengths uh, that we use quite extensively. However, we love the simplicity uh, of Google uh, Sheets. I think it's one of the, the, one of the best attributes uh, of, of the entire Google infrastructure. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of this screen 
and um, take you into the platform, into the different platforms so that you can see uh, a little glimpse of it. All right. And so this is, now Salesforce has had some issues this afternoon. I was in Salesforce all day today and then um, went downstairs, got a cup of tea, came back up and Salesforce was not logging in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try again. While he's bringing that up at the end, I'm gonna allow you to um, ask him questions live since we have a small group. I know he just dropped a lot of nuggets, yeah. a lot of seeds, so very good stuff. So uh, I'm excited to- um, and, and this video, yeah, this video will be available um, online, I believe. Uh, and so you, you'll be able to reference it afterwards or you can just uh, reach out to me or share my information uh, so that you can um, contact me. I'd be more than happy to, to help. I do have a free um, consultation uh, if you need just some advice with technology. Um, I'd be more than happy to have a discussion with you afterwards. And so this is Donor Perfect. Uh, we're Your screen is not sharing. It's still on oh. the um, PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Let's do new share. All right, how about now? Yes. All right. Okay, so this is Donor Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and log right in. Come on. Okay, and so uh, it's a pretty simple uh, system when you come in. At first, when I was looking at Donor Perfect, I'm like, man, this looks pretty simple. And then I fell in love with it. Now, as Aretha said, I am a Salesforce developer. I've, wor I've, been wor I've worked in Salesforce um, since 2013. Uh, and so I have um, developed uh, Salesforce, not just for our organization, but for other organizations as well. And I came in here and I'm like, all right, let's see what this can do. And I absolutely fell in love with it. You're able to have dashboards, uh, which will give you real-time data as far as your donations, who was your last donor, um, how, where you're at with your different campaigns uh, and, and, and all of the necessary metrics. So usually when I log in to Donor Perfect, that's the first place I go. I go straight to my dashboard and I'm able to see the metrics uh, that I need. Uh, let's see. Now, within the system, you have, for example, uh, the ability to send emails uh, to do your mail merge. Uh, this is an area that we use a lot because it takes a lot of the work away from our, our staff uh, when it comes to communicating with our supporters and primarily in mass or using some of our some of our reports. Uh, the report center is is pretty uh, robust. You're able to just hop in and build reports. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry, that's Siri just to hop in and build reports or to go to report center. And there's a ton of reports that they've already created, uh, for example, and I have a report on, that's based on COVID-19, where we're at with donations. I could click it, run the report. And because we have a COVID-19 campaign, I'm able to hop in and see who's given, see how much they've given, whatnot. But let's come out of here because that is information that is private. Uh, then you have tasks. I'm able to go into the task and see our monthly giving as well as our, our events management. Uh, I'll, be, I'll show you a little bit about the monthly giving in a little bit and uh, one of the be beautiful features of it. Uh, with utilities, I'm able to look for duplicates, uh, run some global updates. 
And then the app links that I was telling you about earlier, uh, being able to have, for example, our processing gateway, if someone calls in right away and they're like, hey, uh, I wanna give something uh, and I wanna, you know, oh, I gave a gift and I didn't get an email. I could just hop into the gateway and take a look at it. Uh, as well as our online forms. I talked a little bit about that and about how robust the, the forms are. You can go ahead and add a form and, it, and you're able to create forms based on uh, a few different form settings that are already preset. Uh, so from your signups and surveys, so these are things that we'll normally do. And, and now these are just templates. So you're able to fully customize these templates, uh, being able, for example, to go ahead and set up the entire space for the for your different events, as well as memberships uh, and donations. Uh, let's get back here. Uh, and so it, that's one of the beautiful things. Then the ready, set auction. I wanted to show you what a uh, donation would look like. And uh, right away, you're, uh, you're able to see the last donor or the last person that you went into. And so I created a donor um, just for this example. And from within Donor Perfect, you could immediately take gifts. So if someone calls in to the office and they want to give a gift, uh, you can go right to the gifts page and you can take an instant gift, uh, whether they want to give it through their bank account or card um, one time or monthly. And so uh, it's, it's one of the easy features for our staff. They love being able to just pop right in, find the donor and uh, give that. You're able to see as well uh, if they're a volunteer. So this is a donor, for example, that has volunteered, I could come in, I could see when they volunteered, what was the event, um, as well as, you know, uh, who connected them uh, to the organization. Uh, you, you have full pledge management. A lot of our donors uh, set up monthly pledges. And so you could come in, you could create a pledge, and from that pledge, if you attach a credit card to that pledge, and the credit cards will be within the account section, the system will automatically uh, bill that pledge uh, monthly. And so you're able to uh, easily manage uh, this entire system right from within. Sometimes for our donors, their credit card information changes they'll call us, we'll just go right in and update their credit card information or bank account information uh, within the system. And uh, that's the basis of Donor, Donor Perfect. I needed something that was simple, easy for, for our staff. You know, for me, I'm technical, I'm all over the place. I could navigate systems, but for our staff and volunteers, they wanted something simple. Uh, you do not have a limit with the amount of um, with the amount of users, which was another big thing for us, I needed to be able to have our volunteers use the system. Now, our volunteers do not see. You're able to customize, for example, what each person sees. And so, with you user management, I am able to customize who sees what by having groups. And so, I have a volunteer group and I. And so our volunteers, for example, at an event, I have the ability to take donations, but not see, um, but not see information from our donors. All right, so let's see here. Does anyone have any questions? Because I could go on and on and on about this. But I would really like to go with the next, you know, with this last uh, 23 minutes and just um, take the time to answer questions. Yes, I know there's got to be some questions. I know I was excited because looking at this, I was just like, you know what? This is perfect. You know, when it's Christmas, who, who gives you every Christmas? So you automatically go to them and say, hey, you know, 
you know they're going to give. So you right. have it right there in the system. That This is great. Anybody else have any questions or comments that um, you want to ask Joel or by comments about what he's shown us so far? You can unmute yourself. Sandra, do you have any questions? I don't know what system you use for your events, and then you have. Um, I, I the, think it's uh, it's really um, piquing my interest. So it sounds very interesting. So, but I think I need a little bit more because uh, we uh, we always need something to track. Seem I don't think we have a good method to track our donors, and I like what you said about pinpointing when they give because we we kind of know you know because we're a small nonprofit so we know who gives when in our head but it sure would be nice and we always want to create something sustainability so if something happens to one of us then everybody can keep moving on and know have that information you know, I want that information lost so I think I'll be looking at this one and then um I wanted him to go back to the screen where um after he finishes with this, I, I didn't get my notes down on, uh, he said Google ad and then YouTube. And then he mm -hmm. said, um, I missed something. Google for uh, so nonprofit, nonprofit, right? I think I missed something. Uh, there's the YouTube um, as well as the Google ads. And then you have, uh, so for example, right on this screen, um, I could hop into, actually, let me log into my, um, the nonprofit one. All right. So if you see over here, uh, you have Google Sheets, for example. Uh -huh. And so all my sheets are connected to, um, to different databases that are able to then take that data and, and then push it out. So for example, uh, I, we, we provide food and, um, and supplies to internationals that are stranded in the US or are here uh, on a work visa, but because of COVID, everything has just slammed them. And so we provide food and just, uh, you know, anything that they need. Uh, and so they're able to go on our website and they can order all of these products from our website for free. It comes into this form and then it pushes from this form into, uh, into Salesforce. And so our staff could go in into Salesforce and they could look back at all of these different internationals and see the history of how we were able to help them how we were able to care for them, what they've received. And so that's, that's huge because it's, it's very, for one thing, it, it really shows um, stewardship uh, as, as a nonprofit and how we are stewarding the, the dollars, how we're stewarding um, the, the, you know, our resources, but it also shows how we were able to help this individual. And sometimes we'll hear from someone years later about, hey, thank you so much for like, I don't remember that person. You go to Salesforce, you pull it up and you see, wow, we actually helped. Well, one of our staff helped them extensively over the course of three months. And, you know, we're able to respond to them and connect rather than saying, well, who are you? What did we do? You know, you're able to actually engage with them. And, and, and I think that is the part of, 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 of us with, with enough, my, my biggest thing growing up, you know, we, we've had times and we, we had it and we've had times when we didn't. And I remember times of just feeling less than, and we, we migrated to America and we went from living the nice middle-class family in Trinidad and Tobago and coming to America and living behind a, a, a car dealership in a one bedroom apartment and it was nine of us and my parents struggled and they worked multiple jobs selling at the flea market, working and going to school at night in order to provide and, and, to, and to create a life for us. 
and they didn't have the issues of COVID. And so for us, we, we really feel passionate about the international community and the families that are here trying to make a life for themselves and for their families back at home and however we could care for them. And so by, by knowing them by name provides for them through dignity and through, you know, it goes against the culture that, that, is, that is going, that is trashing internationals and immigration. And we know, and, and so for them, when, when they call us or when we speak to them, it blows their minds that we remember them. And sometimes it takes a database to do that because it's impossible to remember everyone by name. Wow. Wow. What, what, what stood out for me, and you guys could uh, be um, come behind me with your question. What stood out for me when you said, when you mentioned about fundraising, you really yeah. don't have fundraising unless you have a CRM, a customer relations management tool, because this is how you manage your, your customers and your fundraising. I mean, yeah. they work together. Yeah. So um, any, any other questions? Um, I saw a comment, Christina said, that's powerful, you know, um, what you said. Any other questions? I'm just gonna go down the line. Christina, did you have a question for Joel? Question or comment? Uh, no, not at this time, but it was really cool to see that database uh, being mentioned. That's really like, yeah, that's really powerful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for so much of this uh, demonstration. Oh, you're welcome. I wish I can show you oh. Salesforce, but it's just been, it's weird. It, they've just been down. Yeah. Well, Donor Perfect was great. Um, Chloe, did you have a question or a comment for Joel? Um, I just wanted to comment that I think the tool is going to be very uh, resourceful. I'm here representing my church mm -hmm. and um, we're just looking for different ways to be involved in a community yeah. and to, you know, have it all jammed up and jelly tight. So I think that this is going to be resourceful for that. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Any comments about uh, her church using it as a management tool, Joel? Yeah. I mean, this, this is, is really built also around having members. And so it's more than just, um, you know, for us as nonprofits, we really don't have members. You know, we, as, as a matter of fact, we don't have donors. I, I say donors because of donor perfect. We have champions. We, the reason why we have champions is because we don't engage anyone at all for a dollar uh, when we meet them. When we meet people, we're actually trying to get them to volunteer, to come and experience what we do and through that, we hope that they get a heart for what we do and to go to the next step to become a champion, to become a part of the solution uh, with, with our cause. We don't want people to, to just come and, and just give money. And, and I think that, you know, for a lot of people like, what, you don't? But we really don't. And Aretha knows us. We are so passionate. Yes. I was going to say, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. That is how I got in. I volunteered and it's just, it's, it's I mean, they, they're true to their word and they, and you can see the way they treat people and the, they just bring you in. You want to give, you want to donate. You want to know, how can I help? How can I give more? So, yeah. yeah. And so our, our, our donors, they, they open up their home. Aretha was running for mayor and she opened up her home to two Chinese girls and had had them with her and they 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 fell in love with her and they would never would have had that experience ever not yeah. even living in china because they don't have that over there and so for for them to come and be a part of the democratic process through aretha was life changing for them and so it's this is why a, a crm is so important because when we when we invest in, 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 in this, there, there's exponential growth that happens. I could go into to this, and one of the things I love to do is on Saturdays, I'll go in, in, into Donor Perfect and I'll call someone and I'll ask them how you're doing. Not about money, not about us, how, how are you doing? And I connect with them and I put the notes so you could come down here and you could pop in your notes when you call them, you're popping notes with who sister is, who brother is, who they want prayer for. All of those details go into the narrative that you're able to then 
better care for those that are that that are your donors as well as your constituents and so for churches this is quite powerful because churches has me have members and so you're able to have the membership side of it you're able to take the 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 don the donations or the tithe uh, you have full freedom to change the wording from don donor donation to tithe uh, in the online giving platform uh, as well as uh, they have the, the app for the phone. So we do a lot of that on our phone, uh, being able to take donations on the fly yeah. as well. Would you share your information, your last slide with your information and you yeah. guys can take a screenshot of it. And then I'm gonna ask Janine if she had any questions or comments while he's um, getting ready to put up his last, uh, his information. Janine, did you have any comments or questions? Go ahead. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to show us Salesforce. And um, I do have one question. Uh, we're a very, very, very small 501c3 participant through a, through a second party. And we're thinking about going off and getting a 501c3. Uh -huh. And I think this would be a, a really great investment for us, but I have the choice of hiring an intern or, um, or investing in a system like this. And so for this year, I'm not certain I'd be able to, you know, I'm not certain that I'd be able to make that commitment, mm -hmm. but um, wonder, I guess I need to, to speak with someone at TechSoup to get a quote for next year. Yeah. Um, uh, and my other question was, we use SurveyMonkey, uh huh. Is there a way to integrate surveys from SurveyMonkey into this um, CRM? Um, not directly is. from SurveyMonkey. I sent you a link, not directly from SurveyMonkey, but if you put it in Sheets. Yes. So it'll go from SurveyMonkey to Sheets and then mm -hmm. from Sheets. So Sheets acts as the middleman. Okay. Um, and, and then it will uh, populate. Now, uh, one of the things that I, that I, you know, believe in is scaling, um, especially for new nonprofits is not diving in. I mean, the pool is so deep with the amount of options that we have. Uh, and so as a new nonprofit, you know, as you're stepping off on your own, I highly recommend going with Salesforce. Uh, it's free. You have 10 years of license. So that means $0 commitment. Uh, if you need help, with it, just you know, message me afterwards and I can guide you through the process. It is not hard to get the basics up and running. And it's, you know, it's not, and you can have your intern learn. But one of the things I've learned is that people come and go. And we put our passion, our hope, a lot of times on people hoping that they will stay. And we invest so much into them. And then something else comes along and they're gone. And when that intern leaves, they're leaving with themselves, with them, you know, whatever systems they created or, or methods they used. So from the beginning, you need to establish your own systems, your own guidelines, how you handle data. If, if that intern, for example, um, decides that, you know, you guys had a falling out. We had something with a phenomenal person who was a, a, a great Christian, but went through something. And I had to just lock them out of our databases. And I was able to just go in and lock them out while we worked with them and, and guided them. And so your data is vital. Um, it is the heartbeat of your organization. And so going with something like, like sales beginning, it's free. We can help you get that running. And then you can have your intern come in and use it and populate it for you. Thank you for that. We really appreciate that. And we will be in contact with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Sandra, I'm going to ask you if you have any um, final questions before we get ready to close out. Well, no, it's very informative. So um, 
I'm very inquisitive now. So uh, I think I'm going to look at these because uh, he's telling us the truth, guys. I just had a, a after COVID, I had a, a very um, influential uh, employee leave. And so we're having to pick up the pieces now. And I think one of these putting one of these things in place because you want those things to uh, systems to stay intact and your information to stay intact. So I'm feeling you, Joel. Thank you for all the great information. And uh, I'm going to be talking to Aretha to see which way to go. And uh, so do you purchase the, the Google through um, through TechSoup? Is that yep. something? The Google everything, everything that I showcased here is done through TechSoup. Uh, Google will actually um, check with TechSoup uh, and so you want to go ahead and make sure you have your TechSoup account set up and running and ready to go and, and just follow the props. But TechSoup is, they, they are, they're angels on earth, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest, uh, yeah. for yeah. us. We, they don't pick and choose, you know, if you're a, a Christian organization or, um, you know, a Muslim organization, it, it doesn't matter to them. If you are caring for people, TechSoup is involved and they're, they're there to help. Yes, I've been using them for years. So, um, so Aretha, do we get any kind of uh, discounts for uh, <laughs> for listening to this to, uh, with TechSoup? <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at, as he said, a lot of this is free. You, you, oh, that's the thing, okay. you just have to go on. A lot of this is free. But I would highly recommend, since Joel has been an expert in this, you all get with him and have him and he, and he has a nonprofit just like you. So you all in the same boat and have him, you know, walk you through, do a consultation with him and have him either hire him to set it up for you. But okay. I mean, this is what he does and he's been okay. doing it very well. Great. So, okay. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be getting in touch with you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Right. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for your time. I know you've been super, super busy. And so thank you for coming on tonight to be with us. Um, this, this hour has been so great. I mean, I learned a lot and I always pick up nuggets and tools that I share and pass on with everybody else. So thank you again. Um, any final words that you want to share with everybody? No, just keep keep on keeping on. You know, I I love everyone that is in this non nonprofit space that are, you know, it, it is a sacrificial life. Uh, it's not fun. It's not easy. There are times when we do get joy um, out of it, but I do know that it that it that it takes away. So please, you know, if there's anything I could leave you with, is to find some space to get some rest and have some fun. You know, revive and refresh yourselves because we need we need everybody in this more than ever. Yeah, I could have said it better. Thank you all. Everybody have a great evening and make sure you sign up. Um, go to events at techsoup.org and sign up for our next event and come and join us on ED chat as well. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, Bye. -bye. Good night. Good night.